My name is Michelle Basso, and I am a professor of psychiatry and neurobiology at the Semmel Institute for Neuroscience and Human Behavior and the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. Today I'm going to tell you about work performed by a postdoctoral fellow in my laboratory, Dr. Trinity Crapes. Signal detection theory helps us quantify decisions in the presence of sensory uncertainty. It proposes two distributions, one representing the signal to be detected and the other noise. Hits occur when the signal is present and the subject says it is. Misses occur when the signal is present and the subject says that it's not. False alarms occur when the signal is absent but the subject reports it's present. And correct rejections occur when the signal is absent and the subject says it's absent. Changes in decision criterion result in specific changes in the distribution of these choices. Changes in the criterion leading to more conservative decisions result in decreases in both hits and false alarms, and changes in the criterion leading to more liberal decisions result in increases in hits and false alarms. Changes in sensitivity, when the signal is easier to detect, result in asymmetric changes in hits and false alarms. For example, increases in sensitivity result in increases in hits and decreases in false alarms. We designed a task that allowed us to isolate changes in criterion from sensitivity. Trained monkeys reported whether or not they saw orientation in a glass pattern stimulus and reported a yes or no decision by making a saccade to a green choice target for a yes decision or a red choice target for a no decision. Importantly, the positions of the yes and no choice targets changed randomly on a trial by trial basis. This ensured a decoupling of the location of the saccade from the choice report. Monkeys performed three blocks of trials. The first we called the balance block, in which monkeys saw equal proportions of signal and noise trials. The second was a priming block, in which monkeys experienced either more trials requiring a yes response or more trials requiring a no response, liberal or conservative priming. The third block was identical to the first and contained equal yes and no trials. Based on the proportions of hit and false alarm trials, signal detection theory allows us to calculate a measure of sensitivity called D' prime and the position of the criterion called C. We found that manipulating coherence resulted in changes in D' prime and criterion, but that the sensory motor priming produced changes in criterion exclusively. We then asked whether the superior colliculus, a midbrain structure known to be involved in attention and decision making, contains signals associated with these changes in decision criteria. Trinity made recordings from intermediate layer neurons showing delay period activity while monkeys performed the yes-no decision task. He recorded from neurons before priming, during priming, and then after priming, and found that the difference in the activity recorded on yes trials compared to the activity recorded on no trials changed with sensory motor priming condition. When primed to be more conservative, this activity difference decreased. When primed to be more liberal, the activity difference increased. With our colleague at UCLA, Ha Kwan Lao, Trinity next performs simulations to understand whether a balance of evidence model or a distance to criterion model of decision making best explain the signals measured from the superior colliculus. These models make opposite predictions, and we found that the data best matched the distance to criterion model and not the balance of evidence model. Finally, we asked, if the superior colliculus signals the position of a decision criterion, then manipulation of collicular activity should produce predictable changes in the position of the decision criterion. Trinity measured choice performance in the monkeys for the same decision task, but instead of introducing sensory motor priming by changing the stimulus frequencies, he introduced sub-threshold electrical stimulation to the superior colliculus on 50% of the trials, when the no target was in the stimulation field for conservative priming, and when the yes target was in the field for liberal priming. This manipulation changed the proportions of monkeys' yes-no decisions in the same way that the previous behavioral experiments changed decisions. Importantly, the effect of the stimulation influenced decisions even on trials when the stimulation did not occur, and it did not change the proportions of saccades either into or away from the stimulated field. Taken together, these correlational, modeling, and causal experimental results point toward a novel role for the monkey superior colliculus in establishing decision criteria.